Hello everybody, it's um, Friday, December 8th, and I am actually off work, heading home to see my kids for the weekend. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I was just um, reading some of the comments and cracking up at uh, how messy people say I am. <laughs> and the reality is I'm normally not very messy, but lately I've been having issues. Okay, because I'm over at Daytona, I'm working all day, and pretty much when I get into the van, I just want to cook something real quick and eat and go. Now, I generally try to clean out the van uh, daily if I can, but sometimes I can't, especially like when I'm drinking like lots of water and stuff like that. So I just throw the bottles in the back, and of course some of you are seeing stuff like the, um, the mitts and the rag that I use to hold hot food, and you're thinking that's trash. Now, that's left there on purpose because I cook up front here. And um, if you saw how small the van is, you'd understand why stuff's everywhere. But essentially, it's fairly organized. And believe it like, uh, or not, that's how it normally is. Um, sometimes I'll have things straightened out, and I am still trying to work out a better way of storing my plates and whatnot, because it's kind of scattered. If you've been following along, then you kind of know how things kind of had to be built, rebuilt, ripped apart, and rebuilt again really quick. So I've been reconfiguring the vehicle and still am in process of um, reconfiguring the front, especially um, the cooking and storage area for plates, dishes, and um, spoons and forks and whatnot. But I um, want to apologize for those of you who got offended by the fact that it looks so messy, but that's the reality. Um, I guess if I took the time to clean it out before filming, it would look nicer. And, you know, some of you may not be offended by how messy it is, but um, reality is I live in the van, I work all day, and I get back home, and I cook, you know, I don't spend time cleaning. I typically will try to clean, um, each day I try to remove the trash that I generated the day before, okay, but when I um, have stuff like bottles and whatnot sometimes I don't remove those because I try to recycle you know plastic and whatnot or I take it home and I actually refill it with water filtered water but like right now I'm heading back um, tomorrow actually tonight I'm gonna be reconverting the van back to normal mode for um, my children so I can carry them around I'm gonna go do things for the weekend I do plan on um, cleaning it out then but we're talking about it should take me like five minutes to clean this van. It's not like really messy, even though it may look like it in the video. And probably the reason is because the rice cooker is sitting on the, uh, the floor of the van. And there's really not room here. It's just this little center slot, you know? That's where I put my um, towels, my um, bottles, my um, ketchup, all this other stuff that's used for food, as well as the console here. So if you've not tried to live in a minivan, then um, you probably don't understand how cramped it actually is. If you have and you're uh, neater than me, um, post your videos, links, and you know I'd like to check it out and get some ideas because I'm always open to ideas for um, making life better. <laughs> Try we're here, right? To share our experiences and hopefully uh, learn from one another. I do try to take um, what viewers say into consideration. Some of you may have noticed the uh, food and stuff I've been eating. I've been trying to upgrade my food. Um, Still have to watch the budget because that is an ongoing issue right now until things stabilize with the um, work and whatnot. But I have been trying to eat better, so basically you're noticing that I've been buying more vegetables and fruits and, and that kind of stuff. So I've started to really look into that. And the reason for that is, believe it or not, um, because of the viewers. You know, I normally am not one to eat a lot of um, vegetables and fruits, but after after having um, done this channel and reading the comments and stuff, I decided to go ahead and check it out and see what it would be like. And um, so far, it's actually pretty good. I've been finding some bargains at um, Walmart at the veggie rack where they have the salads and stuff. But the other day, I went to explore Aldi. And um, I've been to Aldi before, but not for van-type food. And after looking at it, I think I may shift a lot of my shopping to Aldi for certain things. Uh, Dollar Tree has a lot of stuff, but they don't have a lot of fresh things, like vegetables and fruits. Aldi has them, Walmart has some, especially on discount. So that's what I've started to look for. So look for more episodes of those kind of finds. And um, 
I didn't even know like the deli will actually cut single servings. So the viewer who suggested that, thank you very much. You've taught me something that I may start looking into because that would certainly allow you to make like a real quick sandwich without having to carry the, um, the meat and stuff around, you know. Those of you who are commenting and stuff, I don't know if you actually live in a vehicle and have a situation where, you know, storing cold food is an issue. Uh, this van, I'm not really carrying anything other than my little console cooler, which I think at the most it'll hold like um, six or eight cans of soda. It's not exactly big. Like right now what I have in it is um, three bottles of water, a big cup of ice, and uh, one of these um, orange juice thingies that I just bought from um, Aldi. It was like a dollar fifty-seven or something, a dollar sixty for this orange juice. Isn't that crazy low? So I'm gonna start shopping at Aldi for stuff like orange juice and certain other foods, which are actually uh, quite nutritious, uh, at least more nutritious than soda. So that will help me to wean off soda and get some sugar still into me. You know, natural sugars versus um, corn syrup, which they put into the sodas. Now, as far as the night gig itself, some people are wondering why I bothered to come back because they saw the um, my first go round at this job and how I ended up leaving. Essentially, what was going on at that time was YouTube um, was still kind of fairly small but growing, and then when I took the night gig, the YouTube kind of died because I wasn't able to produce as much content because I was focused on um, the work and stuff, and. I was starting to do okay with that job once I told them I didn't want to do the hotels anymore and they were willing to pay me to travel. But then child support kicked in and wanted to garnish everything. They were going to take as much as 85% of my earnings. And that's what killed the gig eventually because when they put in to garnish 85% of my earnings, that would leave me with no money at all to live off. So I would be paying to go to work and they're not getting paid at all. So that resulted in me having to leave the job, including all the other crazy stuff, which I was willing to deal with. Coming back this go round right now, um, Department of Revenue and Child Support is standing back. You know, they're letting me uh, continue to make my payments and try to catch up. So that's allowing me to get back into the job to try to make payments. Now, I have been making payments since I started working as a handyman. Obviously, I'm behind still because the handyman job didn't pay enough. You know, I was working uh, 39 hours because they don't want to make you full time. And I was making just a little, about minimum wage. Actually, maybe even a little less. But, yeah, about minimum wage. And the night gig is almost the same, you know. But, here's the difference is uh, this go-round versus last time. The first is that I know what to expect and I know what I'm willing to tolerate and what I'm not willing to tolerate. So I've been very upfront with the company about how I require my weekends off and um, that way I don't have visitation issue with my ex-wife and my children and I can actually plan visitation. The other thing is by keeping a consistent schedule, my um, ex can't, you know, deny visitation. So if we go back to court because she's not letting me see my kids again, I can let the judge know, you know, I do have a consistent schedule now and, and she's not letting me see them. So she's actually been um, working, you know, as far as not trying to cause trouble, I think. So it, it, it's been a long, ugly struggle, but basically this go round right now, she appears to be staying low and not trying to create any more problems. So that's giving me an opportunity to try to stabilize and get this job so that I can earn some real money and actually try to get the arrears caught up and then, you know, keep making the payments and whatnot so that everything's normal. Now, right now, to be honest, I'm not making enough to cover everything. Um, the knife gig, I'm still pretty much kind of in the draw, in the negative, because I owe on the draw. But the reason I stay is because, as some of you have surmised and, and figured out, um, the company is promising a draw, a base draw, which is a little bit about minimum wage, a little bit above minimum wage, um, which is enough to cover my uh, child support payments. So at least that'll be out of the way, and I can pay a couple bills. But it obviously isn't enough to cover everything. So I'm still trying to make some more income using um, YouTube 
and eventually, which I'm starting to look into now because things are stabilizing, getting back into software development and trying to work on some projects that will hopefully pay off and I can make some money on those. Now, some viewers have asked why I don't do the, um, try to do the live broadcast and do the super chat feature where viewers can pay money to have their personalized message pop up on the screen so that the YouTuber who's doing the broadcast can see it and mention them or whatever. Um, I, I don't really want to push that and haven't been pushing it because I don't really believe that the viewers of this channel should have to pay to get my attention. As you guys know, if you've been following along, I don't really want to make money off my subscribers paying me directly. Um, some people have asked for patron accounts, fund me, or even my PayPal accounts, and I ended up reluctantly creating a patron account, but I shifted it to do software. So I haven't really been promoting it on here because I'm hoping to get some games out and then promoting it for the video gamers, you know, who want to play the game and help the development of the new game that I'll be working on. So I don't want to make money from um, this YouTube channel with viewers just sending me money unless they really want to, you know, because they want to. I don't want to do it and say, well, if you don't pay me, I can't do the channel and all this other stuff. Um, and definitely I don't want it because people pity me. You know, I want it, if, if someone's sending anything, I just want them to do it because they feel like they want to be nice and they just want to do it. Not because I'm asking them to do it. And I definitely um, would rather have the channel on its own make money off the advertisers. That's why you see me, um, you know, getting so, I guess, uh, upset about the whole demonetization issue that's currently hitting YouTube. And anyone who um, has produced the YouTube channel and is uh, counting on the ad revenue to try to sustain the channel is having the same issues right now. So it's still happening and it seems to be random. I'm just praying that I can uh, survive long enough to ride out the storm because even though more views are occurring, less ads are being shown. And so the earnings are dropping. And there's really no way to combat that other than to try to ride this out. The algorithm has changed some stuff, so you're gonna notice my stats dropping. One of my uh, most popular videos, the one with the headlight cleaning, is dropping down rapidly. Now, that's actually affecting the, the count, you know, the number of views per month, as well as earnings. So I've gotta come up with some more videos that will become semi-viral like that one. The issue with it, though, is that really, I don't know, you know, the algorithm, it keeps changing daily, so you really don't know, and you don't wanna, I definitely don't wanna try to produce videos that are geared specifically for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, to do that, I think, is um, basically just using YouTube to try to make money on. And that was never the intent of this channel, um, although that's what it's become because it's helped me to survive all this time. But this YouTube channel was never intended to be a big money maker. And even now, I still don't see it as being a really big money maker because it is a very niche um, channel. You know, not many people aspire to live in a van. <laughs> although some of us, you know, this is the ultimate dream. Now for me, I, you know, if I was doing this uh, as a dream, it would, my van would be nicer than this, okay? And you know, it would be all these things people are saying, hey, you should be neater, you should be doing this, you should get a GoPro, you should do all this stuff. Yeah, if you've got the money and the funding. But if you're on an emergency situation, hey, this is the best that I can do with what I have. So if you see upgrades happening, it's because maybe I'm doing better. But if you don't see upgrades happening, <laughs> then it's because I'm living in reality. So uh, that's why you see things as they are. You know, I'm making do with what I have. Those of you who understand, I appreciate it. Those of you who are new to the channel, you might want to start watch watching the channel from the very beginning um, with the vlog entry, vlog 001 or whatever it is, number one, where you see how we started and what was going on. And then you're gonna maybe appreciate how we're actually even around this long, you know, almost two years later with the vlog still going on and at more than 1,000 episodes. So, that's pretty much that. Now, as far as the knife gig, I stay because it is consistent work and uh, I have the opportunity, if I can do well enough, get myself, get my brain, get my mind back up to it and get lucky enough that they put me in some decent stores, that I can actually do pretty decent. And if I can do decently, it may be enough to get some money to try to get a new vehicle or something. 
I don't intend on staying in this job forever. This is not a career move. But, you know, most people, honestly, most people burn out in this job after three months. And those of you who have been listening to, you know, me talking about the job and all that's involved with it, you'll understand why. It's a lot of work, and sometimes you don't even get paid for it. And even with a draw, you still owe the company money. But the reality is this. Let's say I, I work and I owe the company a lot of money. Well, two things will happen. One, they're going to fire me because I'm not earning enough money. Okay? So they're not going to keep me employed. Two, they're probably not going to get their draw back because they already know I don't have enough money because they didn't pay me enough. <laughs> so even though they call it a draw, it's only a draw while you're still working there and you're earning money. So if you earn more than the 400 they subtract from it to make up for the previous week or the previous two weeks where you had to pull the money and borrow it out to hit the $400. So that's kind of a security for me. Um, $400 a week or whatever is nothing. You know, if you know with all the bills and everything and that a person has to pay, especially if you have um, child support to deal with as well as a house payment. Now, I don't have a really big house payment because Walter's been kind enough, and I told you about that. He's giving me a chance to stay at his place for a fraction of the cost, although we're about to hit the six-month point, and at that point, he and I had agreed we're going to try to raise the amount up if we can. So I've got to earn more than I'm making right now, which, which brings me to my next point. I cannot, um, right now, I'm not earning anywhere near enough, even despite, um, you know, trying to keep the YouTube channel maintained and trying to continue with the um, living in a van vlog. So I've got to bring up another form of income and I've been looking into things that are possibilities. I've started to look into um, affiliate marketing with Amazon, but I don't really see anyone ordering through Amazon through my uh, channel. And it could be because I haven't really been pushing it. But without that happening, this avenue is gonna close because it's been like a month or so and I don't think I've had any orders. Therefore, Amazon will cancel my affiliation. That means no Amazon. I may try one more time this weekend if I get some time or this week. But you know, even to do something like that, a lot of people think when you do affiliate advertising or things like that, it's really simple. It's not. You still have to promote, you know, the stuff so you hear the um, the YouTubers or whatnot that do it. They mention it, and it's because without sales going through there, the company like Amazon or whatever will cancel you. And right now, I haven't been promoting it, which is why most of you probably don't even know that I'm an affiliate of Amazon. Um, I, I tend to look at those and I don't really see, although some people say they are successful at it, I don't really see it making a lot of money, although it would be nice if it was a steady uh, stream of income that was coming in, because that would be just another stream. What you don't want is just one stream of income and then something happens and you lose everything, which is kind of where I sort of am right now, although with the knife gig, YouTube starting to do halfway decent. YouTube is still nowhere near enough to live off. If you calculate how much YouTube is earning versus um, um, working even a minimum wage job, <laughs> YouTube is much, much less than minimum wage. But at the same time, it's one of those things that as long as YouTube stays alive and, and continues to run ads and stuff on things, you can make some income. It's like a little bit of extra money. It could be enough for gas money, you know, for the road trip or something. It's not gonna be enough to live off, at least not unless my channel grew quite a bit exponentially. But it's better than nothing. And I'm thinking that, you know, maybe I can produce some more other content, like my software, and try to make money off of that. I don't really want to do live super chat, live chats and have some people donate via super chats unless they really want to. I think the feature has been turned on. I think defaults are being turned on, so I went to look at my chat options. And it is on, and I don't think I've ever gotten any um, super chats. Um, and it may be because people weren't aware of it, but it's also because I haven't really you know, pushed it. I would rather have people feel that um, they're on this channel and I respond to them, not because they gave me money. I respond to them because, you know, I feel that what they have to say is important and what the response. So, some viewers have noticed that I respond and try to fulfill um, viewer requests and whatnot. I do it not because I expect anything from you. I do it because I want to show my appreciation that you are a viewer, a loyal viewer here, 
and that what you say is read and I think some of it's important and if I can um, do it and it's not too much hassle um, it's something that I'll do uh, you know it's just something I want to do for you I think you're that important I think the viewers on here are important I think your um, suggestions although some of you uh, really <laughs> I'm just surprised at the kind of things that you say. I'm like, wow, you know, maybe you and I were raised differently. Uh, some of you have, I guess what you call a lack of tact. But um, I suppose that's okay. Although, like, if it becomes blatantly rude, don't be surprised that I start blocking people just because I want to try to keep this channel positive. We do have children watching this channel. You know, my kids do watch it. So I try not to have anything that's blatantly bad on here. And I do delete those people and try to block ban those people if I can from the channel. Um, that's pretty much it. I am surprised though. Somebody said that they hear me complaining all the time. Do I really complain that much? You know, I know sometimes I tell you about the situation with work and whatnot and everything that's going on. I didn't realize I was complaining, but maybe it comes across as complaining. For the most part, I'm really happy with um, everything that's going on right now in my life. Um, Tesler so far is keeping up with their, you know, agreement with me, and as long as they do that, I will continue to pimp knives, I'll continue to show up for work, and do all this stuff, even though, as many of you have surmised, this is a lot of work for not a lot of money, but it is enough to carry me through right now, and the biggest thing that I really enjoy about this job is the flexibility that they're giving me right now. And right now they're doing it because they have a shortage of people. So, you know, they've been giving me the, the weekends off as I've requested so I can see my kids and spend some time with my family. I did try briefly, and I still may do it, if, depending on whether or not they even need me and how it's gonna work, to try to work the weekends because that's when you get the most number of people coming to go grocery shopping. So that's your best days, you know, Saturday and Sunday to sell the knives. The problem I've been seeing is when I volunteer to do that for the company, they put another person with me. Yeah. So by putting two people there and having us do 16 shows instead of 12, what happens is the company makes more money. They have 16 shows on a busy day, so the company overall makes more money on Saturday and Sunday. The problem though is for the vendor. If you do the math, you're going to see that instead of doing 12 shows, each vendor, each person, myself and my partner, get to do only eight shows, roughly, to get a total of 16. And, so you're doing eight shows, which means you're already earning less, and you're splitting up the total number of sales that you would get for the day with another person. So in other words, both people that are working earn less than they would if they were working by themselves, even on a normal day. Once I saw that happening and looked at the numbers, like that one day I worked at the NEX, I sold two. The other guy sold like 16. So we had 18 for the day, which is like a normal sales number, but I made two. That was $12 for the whole day. I worked for $12 for that day. And I know they make the draw, they give me the draw and stuff, but still I have to pay that money back. So that's terrible. So with that said, what I told the company is this, you know, I told the immediate, my, my boss now, who's the regional manager for I think Southeast area here, I said, look, if you need me to work on Saturday and Sunday because you don't have anyone else to do it, I will work it. But if you have someone else, I'm not coming in. And the reason is I don't want to split my time with another person and only make a fraction of what I would make even on a slow day like a Monday or Tuesday. Because, you know, I, I can typically, even on a bad bad week or something, in a bad location, I'll usually try to make at least 10 to 12 sales in a day, which is not much, okay? But that's better than um, making two or four or six sales for the entire day because I was stuck working with someone else. And the other big thing with um, working with another person is this. If the other person is um, a pushy seller, like they shove the knives at the customer. Most customers will take those knives, but then what they do is they walk off with the knives and then they put it on a shelf somewhere or they give it to the cashier at the register and it comes back. And you're like, well, that doesn't matter, it comes back. Well, what happens is because there's no real way to track them, 
when it comes back, it didn't make it through the register. But our roster on what we sold, the, the tracking sheet that the other seller and I used, it listed they sold it, okay? So they credit it coming back and they give a percentage to that other person and a percentage to me. So even though the other person may be having returns because they shoved all the knives into the other person, you know, into the customer's hands, I take the hit and I lose that sale. That was a legitimate sale for me. So I'd rather not deal with that. I prefer to work by myself on a given day so that if something came back, I know it's mine. Not someone else's and then I take a hit on it. So those are some of the drawbacks to it. But let me tell you some other positives about this job. One, I do know now that you're not gonna earn as much as they told you at the beginning to hire you. So I don't come in with rose-colored glasses. Two, um, you kind of set, you know, like your own, you kind of like your own boss when you're there, because it's pretty much a you. So I try to have fun with the show, with the customers, and I do follow the script for the most part, but I modify it a little bit to be a little bit funnier and to have a little bit of fun with it. And I'm honest with the customers. I don't really see myself as a knife salesman. I see myself as a product demonstrator. And I try to demonstrate the um, features of the knives and tell how wonderful they are because they, you know, I truly believe they're wonderful. And I just leave it up to the customers to take it if they want it, you know. Um, that's not really being a good salesman. <laughs> but I tend to have less of a return issue because people who grab the knives from me, they really want them because there's no point in grabbing them. You know, I'm not grabbing it. I'm not putting it in their face and saying, take it now before you get your free gift. I'm saying take it if you want it. It's a fantastic product. You can make your life better. So I prefer to be by myself so I can track the actual return rate and whatnot versus having to deal with another person's return rate and getting upset because I think it's not mine that came back, but I'm being counted. It's counting against me. The other thing about the job is even on the days where they have another person working with me, on those days there are some benefits and that is you can alternate. You can take turns working. So you actually don't work the whole day when you have two people working. You alternate back and forth between your two shows. You know, they do a show, I do a show, they do a show, I do a show. And then you have each other helping to hand out tickets and stuff. So in theory, if the other person helps out, you should be getting bigger audiences. So that should help with selling more knives. But the other thing is, while they're doing the show, you can sort of take a break. You go to the bathroom. And if you're at Sam's Club and they're doing um, product demonstrations, like free food samples, you can go eat for free. Yeah, that's always cool, right? Um, for me, I use it to try to check on the YouTube, do updates as I can. And um, sometimes I go to the, you know, take the food samples and whatnot. So you do get a little bit more rest when there's two of you working. But for me, I would prefer to be by myself and work straight through, do my 12 demos and call it a day. You know, because that's how I am. And I will stick with my end of the agreement. I expect the other party to do the same. As long as Hessler continues to um, honor their agreement, I will stay with them. You know, unless I end up getting a, a full-time position that's actually a real job that I'll be able to take care of my family and not have to scatter myself all over the place. But to be honest right now, looking at my situations, um, I don't really see that happening too soon, although I'm still continuing to apply for, you know, work. When I say work, I mean like a real job, you know, that um, pays decently. Uh, that I can support my family and get myself reestablished and you know plan for the future here because I'm, I'm not exactly young anymore. Now the other thing is YouTube continues to grow very slowly and I've started to look at it and trying to figure out what I can do to try to help it as well as to um, make it a, a job. You know if it becomes a job which I didn't see two years ago, and even as late as a year ago. But since then, the channel has grown quite a bit and continues to grow. So the idea that I could actually become a real YouTuber, <laughs> I don't know what's real and what's not real, is actually uh, starting to exist. You know, I'm like, huh, YouTube can be decent if I can get the numbers up, but what I don't want to do is sell my soul. 
I don't want to produce content specifically, you know, to try to make money. Because I think if you do that, you're kind of selling yourself. And um, not that there's anything wrong with that. If that's what you do for a living, you know, you make money off yourself. That's what an entertainer does, right? I may do that on a, a special channel. Maybe I'll create a channel that's um, just off the wall. Somebody told me about guava juice. I decided to look him up. And um, I don't really see... I thought it was um, interesting, you know, his viewership and how much he's actually making. But there wasn't anything too, like, grand or anything about it. Although he uses really colorful um, pictures and stuff and titles and stuff. So, And I think most of his audience are, like, kids. So that seems to be the big thing on YouTube is if you can get a kid channel. Which I don't have a problem with doing because I used to be a first grade teacher. So maybe I'll do a kid specific type channel which is G-rated. And uh, try to generate money via that channel. But as far as this living in a van channel, this channel was never intended to be a big money maker. It was never even really intended to be a money maker. It was intended to help people out. You know, people who found themselves about to lose their home. So, you know, if, if you look at this channel and you compare it to some of the other more glamorous van type channels where they have a, a, a nice RV type van or, you know, they have the actual money to buy a van and rig it up, you know, those channels tend to do fairly well because everyone likes to look at, you know, a glamorous life here or, or what they perceive to be glamorous. For me, I think this channel, even though it, it deals with living in a van, has been mostly about survival and it's not like scripted survival those of you who've been following know this is all real um and you know we've gone through some hard moments together some sad moments as well as some very interesting moments so that's what's going on with the channel and going on with my life i do appreciate you guys tuning in it is getting dark so i'm assuming the camera's going to start lagging and voice might not sync on this because we tend to have syncing issues with this camera so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off right now because it is getting kind of long and I'm rambling on and on I do appreciate you guys tuning in I hope you're having a great day staying safe and I want to thank you for all your comments and suggestions I do read them and I try to implement them when possible and I try to share with you the results for better or for worse <laughs> until next time everybody have a great day